So the moon is your primary filter. And what we know about the moon when we're a soul and we're flying around in space and we're consciousness and we're just existing in the delight of other consciousness without form, we watch how the planets and the moon engage together and how the moon works with the sun and the moon works with the stars and the moon works with all of the pieces and parts of the actual planet Earth, right, and all the other planets. And each planet that has its own moon has its own relationship with the moon. And so as consciousness, when we're watching how the moon interacts, we see how formless and yet formed it can be also, just like us as souls, right? It um, has places where it hides and it has places where it shines with beautiful light that can light up the entire planet that um, becomes an anchoring of direction and guidance. But when it's, it's in its uh, new moon phase, you can't see anything, right? You can't see any aspect of it. And so as consciousness, when we're looking at the moon, it's mysterious, it's, um, it dances, it changes its shape and its form, and it is defining itself always how it is in relationship to all of those other uh, cosmic energies around it. So how does it relate to the sun, right? It absorbs the brilliance of the sun and it shines and reflects it out. How does it relate to the planet? Well, depending on the perspective, either the moon goes around the planet or the planet goes around the moon, right? Depending on which one you're talking to. But it has this relationship between the two. And so when we decide as a soul that we're going to put on this filter of the moon and we're going to come down and inhabit the human body, what our human experience automatically is going to include, what we know it will include, is this um, phasing from new moon to full moon back to new moon. So we know that our human experience is going to be one that is constantly reforming and reshaping itself. It's going to have cycles where it is hidden and mysterious and in the dark, and then cycles where it is full and brilliant and lights up the sky and illuminates truth and shadow in ways that no other cosmic being or soul or human could do. And so when the human filter, the human has the soul filter called moon, and it, they come and they decide to start this adventure, we don't always know how we're going to play, right? We believe that we're always going to be in our brilliance. We're always going to be shining our own light to the world. And so when we come and we're these little children, we are in our brilliance and we can tell everyone what we think and we can be dramatic and put on different personas and costumes and go in and out of other people's spaces and play and dance in this delightful, entrancing, moon-like, feminine, mysterious way. So what happens with a moon filter, when you're a human with this moon filter, you start to lose who you are in relationship to other people when you're not constantly being reminded or brought back to your own center. So often for someone who has a moon filter, the parents will They'll choose a parent, they'll choose a soul as a parent who's going to put limitations on them and tell them no and put fear and worry into their space, bring in the shadow so that as they start their personality, their ego walk, they have the light and now they're also playing with the shadow. Because the point of the journey, the purpose of the moon filter is to dance with shadow and light, to be able to see both. So if they're always illuminated and brilliant and full, and they don't have the experience of the shadow, they don't have the contrast. They don't have the ability to see both sides. And so when they're little, they end up absorbing a lot of the fears of the people around them. And so they tend to shrink when they're in their teenage years, perhaps 20s, right? They're... Um, in their shadow and feeling small and not knowing who they are and trying to define and unravel the pieces of who they are individually. And so the dance begins, right? And the walk of the human uh, who has this moon filter is to identify more and more what their pieces are, what their 
areas of brilliance are, what their own truth and knowing is. And they do it by defining what they aren't usually, right? So they'll be in relationship with someone and then go, no, I'm not that, and pull back and go, okay, now I know I don't have that aspect in myself or I choose to not foster that thing in myself. And so by defining the knots or the shadows, they end up finding, weaving their way into their own yeses and knowing. And so in their gifts, right, when the moon filter finds their gift and they step forward into the fullness, the brilliance of the full moon, they have such depth and such richness of contrast of being able to see the shadow, see the light, see the truth, see the falsehood, um, identify where someone is in their power and identify where they're not and where they're in manipulation. And so they can bring this huge range into relationships, right? Because they're still dancing in relationship with people, you know, as the planet and the moon and the stars and the moon and the sun and the moon. They're always in relationship and community with other people. And as they bring their gifts and their knowing into that space, they can help others um, find their own truth by the example that the moon provides, by the illumination and the clarity that they bring. And so in their gifts, a moon is a mediator. They're um, a, a person who's able to see both sides, see big perspective, be able to communicate between one and the other. Like, this is what I think you meant, and this is what I hear you saying. And they can do that between humans. They can also do that between dimensions, between times, between um, animal and human, between like you do, right, or between um, plants and humans, right? They can start to connect um, communications that perhaps have been stopped before because they can hear so intuitively all of the different aspects. So as the moon finds its brilliance and its fullness and it starts to claim all of those pieces, the impact that they can have globally is tremendous, right? Because the moon controls the tides, the oceans, the weather. You know, the moon sets the schedule with the sun of day and night. So they have this impact that can be so universal in our world. And the courage that it takes from where they started is an honor to witness, like I am witnessing with you all it is beautiful to see you stepping into your power and claiming more and more of who you are in relationship to others, right? So that is the moon filter. What are your thoughts? <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Ooh, 